Hail, souls of the mortal, sitting here in my demon portal, and to the demons that keep it running. I want to welcome you to another vision through my portal. This time it's a story summoned by Deify himself called The Stalker's Maze. So go ahead and sit back, relax, grip your toes, and just listen. The Stalker's Maze Written by Deify Complete darkness is something no one can accurately describe. I sat on the cold concrete ground surrounded by utter blackness. A blackness so deep I couldn't even see my hands as I lifted them in front of me. The air was thin and stale, causing short inhales followed by longer, shaky exhales. My back was pressed against an equally cold concrete wall as I peered strongly into the darkness, attempting to force my eyes to adjust in this place, devoid of even the smallest light. Breathing sounds emanated from the seemingly eternal blackness in front of me. These were not my breaths. Uh, hello? A light, male voice emitted from the dark. The soft whimper was clear in this completely silent place. My sense of hearing was the only sense I could trust. His confused and frightened plea got my attention quickly as I turned my head towards the source. I opened my mouth to speak, but another sound in the opposite direction caught my attention. Hey, where are you? Who are you? A deeper voice broke through the stale air. I remained quiet. Please, please don't hurt me, man, the softer voice pleaded. I don't know what's going on, but I'm not going to hurt you. I don't know why I'm here, the deep voice offered in a lower tone. Several seconds of silence filled the air as the echo from his voice slowly faded. I moved to speak yet again, but was once again interrupted. You guys, what's happening I don't know what this is either. I went to bed and woke up here. I don't remember anything. Another disembodied voice stated from directly in front of me. I had to say something to make them aware of my presence. Hey. Me too. I have no memory after going to sleep. I just woke up here. Cold and in the dark. Who are you people? I said hurriedly trying to get my words in before someone else spoke. Tell me who you are first, the deeper voice snapped back. I was thrown off by a sudden anger, but I understood it. The voice on the other side of the room spoke up first. My name is Evan. I'm, I'm scared, man. We need to find a door or something, the jittery voice said, clearly becoming more and more terrified as his words progressed. David, the voice directly in front of me simply stated, there were several more seconds of quietness as the complete silence allowed an audible heartbeat from my chest. I'm Luke, but we're not getting anywhere getting to know each other. Let's try and get the hell out of... His commands were interrupted by a loud buzzing sound, filling the entirety of the room. A dim, red glimmer appeared in the darkness. The small amount of light provided a reddish hue, lighting up one section of the room. I slowly began to sit up. I was interrupted by the sight of a silhouetted hand reaching for the light. What the hell is this? Luke's voice whispered in a much lower, still deep voice. A figure began to appear on the other side of the light. I don't know, but this might be the way out, David said with a confident tone. I moved towards them to join in on the discussion. The room was still eerily dark as I could not make out my fellow captives other than the darkened shadows. The red light was somewhat beckoning as I slowly moved toward it. It didn't take long for the four of us to arrive at the light source. It's a power box, David said as soon as I arrived. We need to find out what it's powering. That's a start at least. Hey guys, look. Evan said as he ripped a small piece of paper off the side of the box. 
Evan took a few seconds to review what the small paper had to offer. His eyebrows furrowed in the red hue as he slowly looked up. He slowly handed the paper to David, who began reading it aloud. On two days complete, you will have reached a great feat. Your freedom you'll meet. David read with a whisper, slowly lowering the notes as he read. A tearing sound was heard next to me. Guys, there's another one on this side, too. Luke said while angling the freshly torn note under the little light there was. To leave forever, couples must work together, for we're more clever, Luke said in a straightforward and flat tone. As Luke let out an exhale through his nose, a shadow appeared to wave underneath the box. Another piece of paper. This time, I moved to grab it. The red light washed the newly found slip of paper in an almost blood-red light. I began reading. Your stalkers will watch as we count down with each notch. Death pairs with each botch, I said, attempting to say it like the poem it was meant to be. Damn it, what the hell is that supposed to mean? Is this some deranged fanboy of horror movies trying to get his rocks off by scaring us? Evan shouted as we all straightened up from his sudden outburst. Shut the hell up, man. Luke growled at his intimidating deep voice. Even though we were all bathed in shadows, I could feel the two glaring at each other. The standoff didn't last long, however. Another loud buzzing sound was heard. Directly behind Luke, a rectangular light began to appear. A door was opening. This was our way out. We moved towards the door as a white light filled the room. The confines of the room we had been in appeared before us. The tiny, dark room was beginning to fill with an almost welcoming light. As we approached the door, sobbing was heard from right behind us. The four of us stopped in our tracks and slowly turned our frames to look behind us. As the light began traveling across the walls, a huddled body began to light up in the corner. Tears covered his cheeks as the young man in front of us held his knees to his chest. David immediately pivoted to approach the frightened man. Hey, who are you? Why didn't you tell us you were there? David said in a soft voice as to not frighten this poor person who was clearly terrified. I'm, I'm so scared. I didn't know who any of you were, where I am, or what, or what I'm doing here. He said with heavy sobs in between each word. We're going to get out of here, buddy, David replied, trying to offer as much support as he could. David reached out his hand. The young man, whom we discovered later was named Taylor, quickly grasped David's hand as he pulled him to his feet. After a quick, motivating pat on the shoulder, David led him from the corner and we moved to finally make our exit. We stood in a quiet daze as we absorbed our surroundings. What appeared to be an industrial warehouse greeted us with old, unkempt shelves and machinery littering the large room. As we walked towards the middle, a single, dark hallway led out of the room. Several open rooms that appeared to be darker than the already darkened hallway could be seen down the hall. The five of us looked at each other in confusion, hoping at least one of us would say something about our current situation. Let's split up, Luke said, breaking the silence. We all glared back at him for his terrible idea. His sideways grin showed us he was kidding. Yeah, we can do more damage that way, Evan said with a chuckle. Taylor let out a giggle as well, and we all quickly picked up on the movie he was referencing. Our short burst of humor was short-lived, however, as we began focusing yet again on our current problem. As we browsed the decrepit machinery and tools, a loud crashing sound echoed through the hallway. It was very distant, but loud. The five of us quickly gathered at the entrance to the hallway to investigate the noise. Hey, um, guys? Taylor whispered behind us. Almost simultaneously, we all looked back at Taylor to observe him pointing to the corner of the room. 
another red light appeared, yet smaller. As we approached the mysterious light, we found out quickly what it was. A security camera was aimed towards the middle of the room. A quick glance around showed several more cameras. What the hell? David said with his mouth dropped. Dude, are, are these the stalkers that Note mentioned? They're freaking watching us, man! Even said as he raised his voice with each word. Well, let's change that, David said with authority. Let's get the hell out of here. David began walking towards the hallway to move down and we followed suit. As we walked, the shadows from the dim lights created an almost web-like sight from the protective cages the bulbs were housed in. Aimlessly, we wandered as we passed room after room that seemed to be filled with the same industrial machinery and equipment. This place was larger than we first gave it credit for. A dead end. We'd reached the end of the hallway with no way out. A small note was posted in the middle of the wall. We all stared at each other blankly as we knew what this was. It took a few seconds for one of us to build up the courage to grab the note. To all of our surprise, that person was Taylor. Taking the note off the wall, he began slowly turning to us as he read it. In the room of steam, the doorway lies, but don't scream. Soon you'll meet your team. The hell does that mean? Luke snorted. Dude, this is obviously some sort of industrial plant. There has to be like a boiler room or steam room or something like that. Look, it said the room of steam. We have to find this room. It's our only clue, David said, trying to show a bit of authority. Luke raised his eyebrows and held his hands towards the hallway as if to sarcastically say, Lead the way, boss. We checked four rooms before we finally found it. Two large boilers were on each side of us in a pincer. Directly in front of them were dirty, powered-down turbines. A large shutter door was in front of us and the first sign of hope since leaving that tiny, dark room. A familiar sight met us as to the right of the door was a power box identical to the one we saw earlier, only the red light was off. We approached the power box to figure out a way to feed it power and get the hell out of here. It's gotta be one of these, Luke said confidently, pointing to the two levers next to the box, one crudely painted green and one painted red. Hold up, hold up, I said quickly as I pulled yet another note from the side of the box. Right where this note lies, you'll be in for a surprise. Green brings you allies, I read, attempting that same poetic tone. What allies? Taylor said from behind David's back. I don't know, man, David replied, shrugging his shoulders. It's another stupid riddle like that steam room crap, Luke yelled. It's obvious we have to pull the green lever to get out. Whoever thought of this crap must think they've built a little escape room and watch us as we figure out his stupid little poems. Luke motioned his head towards the corner of the room and waved to the camera. Luke looked to me as if holding the note gave me the authority to decide. I mean, yeah. Pull the green lever, I said, rolling my eyes. With a smirk, Luke pulled the green lever. A loud clunk sound was heard behind the wall, followed by the sounds of machinery. Luke looked towards me with a proud smile. Slowly, his smile began to fall as the machinery continued its loud clunks and squeals. He began uttering low, croaky moans as he began to look down. We all did the same. Evan screamed as we saw a long metal post that shot through Luke's midsection. Luke and I made eye contact as we slowly lifted our heads back up. Slowly. His face became blank as he slumped down, hanging from the post that was jutting out of the wall. Help him! Help him! Evan commanded in terror. It had penetrated deep into his midsection as it took all four of us to slowly pull him off the post. We gently laid him down on the ground and began yelling his name to attempt and keep him awake. It was too late. He was dead. I looked back at the post which was sloppily carved into a point. 
Taylor's newfound confidence seemed to vanish as I heard him begin to cry behind me. In rage, David grabbed the note from my hand and glared at the scribbled writing. Oh my god, he said softly. We didn't solve the riddle. What do you mean? Evan asked. The note says, right where this note lies. The note lied to us, David stated with his authoritative tone now gone. I grabbed the note out of David's hands and crumpled it, throwing it to the ground. I hastily stood up and with an angry pull, I pulled the red lever. More clunks and squeals emanated from the wall again. David moved to grab me and get me out of harm's way. I confidently put one finger up, telling him to wait. The shutters began opening. Evan let out a sigh of relief as David Hurley ducked under the door, not wanting to wait for it to fully open. No, dude, no, Evan cried in defeat. Another shutter door. We were now in a small room with another door in front of us. We looked around. No power box, no notes. Guys, hey guys, Taylor yelled as he pressed his ear against the closed door. I hear voices. We all copied Taylor's posture as we pressed our ears against the cold, dirty door. He was right. Voices were heard from the other side. They were all female and seeming to be arguing with each other. The words were indiscernible, but they were clearly frightened in their tones. Hey, whoever's out there, open the door, Evan commanded. A head-pitched scream was heard on the other side while Evan made his orders. Who's that? A feminine voice yelled from the other side. We're trapped in here, help us, please. Evan continued his frantic cries for help. Um, hold on, give us a second. The same female voice yelled in a way that we could tell she was cupping her mouth to the door so we could hear better. Several minutes passed with more arguing heard from the other side. More machinery noises emitted from the wall next to the door. Very familiar noises. I looked at David who had his hand over his mouth not knowing what was about to happen. Slowly, the shutter began to rise. As the door opened, five women began to appear and among them was Jen. My wife. In an almost romance novel type of way, we leapt towards each other and hugged each other tightly. Oh my gosh, she yelled into my shoulder. What is going on? I don't know, I said softly. But we're getting out of here now. It was then that I turned to look at the others. The other guys I had been trying to escape with were embraced in similar fashion with one of the women. We all seemed to notice the scene at the same time. They're taking couples, David said. Whoever is doing this took. David stopped his explanation and peered towards the shutter door us guys had come from. One of the women, the oldest of the bunch, was standing over Luke's body, hands over her mouth. David walked towards her and put his hand on her shoulder. He knew who the lady was. Don't touch me, she yelled as he jerked away and began backing up. What did you do to him? She yelled, pointing at David. Whoa, I didn't do anything. Whoever is doing this set up a damn riddle to solve. We chose wrong and something came out of the wall, stabbing him. David retorted, putting both his hands up. The woman fell to the ground, crying. He was my husband. Luke. No, Luke. She continued, cupping her face to hide the tears. David knelt down next to her, once again putting his hand on her shoulder. I'm very, very, very sorry for your loss. I believe we're on the same danger, though. Will you help us escape, he said as gently as he could. It was obvious who was going to lead us out of this. From there on, we followed David as he was the only one with a clear mind to take control. A loud buzzing noise was heard again, paired with both of the open shutter doors falling closed with a loud slam. Several of us screamed at the startling event. We were stuck, again. Or at least we briefly thought. Scraping noises began to fill the tiny room from one section of the wall. The wall was moving. It was a false door and what showed itself as soon as it cleared was a regular door. 
The reason I say regular is because it wasn't a shutter door. Not some industrial strength door with an electric box. It was a simple door with a doorknob. One of the women began walking angrily to the door. Kaylee! Another woman shouted, holding her hand out. Kaylee opened the door, peeked in, turned her head to us, and beckoned us to follow. We did. We stood in awe as we had now entered a large circular room. No doors, no hallways. Nothing but what seemed like metal walls surrounded us. Several more cameras hung on the walls, making sure to catch every move we make. The small table sat in the middle of the room with a light beaming down on it, as if to show us something. That something was another note sitting in the middle of the table. Jen darted towards the table as I hastily followed her. Snatching the note quickly, she began reading. Footprints line the wall. Ghost stand turning to watch all. Face who made you fall. These riddles are getting so old, Kaylee groaned as she slumped her shoulders. Wait, you were given riddles too? Taylor asked with a confused look. Yeah, we had to solve some weird code disguised in an annoying math problem to open that door where we found you at, one of the other girls said. Hey, everyone, look, Evan shouted from across the room. He pointed towards the ground. A pair of crudely painted footprints had been painted on the ground directly in front of the wall. A quick look around the room showed many more lining the walls. Footprints line the wall, David said. Go stand turning to watch all. They want us to stand on the footprints, obviously. But what about the last part? Face who made you fall? Kaylee asked with a worried scowl. Fall. Fall. Fall in love! David yelled, lifting his head right from the note. We're couples. They want us to directly face the one that made us fall. In love, right? That's That's gotta be right. Sounds good to me. Jen interjected as she slapped the paper back on the table. We stood, facing each other with our backs against the wall, desperately making sure our feet were lined up perfectly with the terrible attempt at a footprint. I panned the room watching each person make contact with their significant other. A sad sight was seen as the older lady stared at a blank wall on the other side of the room, where Luke should have been. I looked up at Jen whose eyes met mine. She gave me a heartwarming smile. That smile dropped quickly as more machinery began to work in the walls. We'd solved the riddle. I looked at Jen who was shaking her head. The ground began moving underneath me as the floor began lifting up. I felt the sense of weightlessness as the wall behind me opened up. Another false wall. I tried to steady myself as the floor pushed me into this now open wall. I rolled on my back, landing with a thud. I looked up as the false door reclosed itself. A quick glimpse around showed metal passageways that split off in several different directions. It was clearly built with less than sturdy material than the previous rooms. Metal and aluminum walls led me in several directions as I began walking, picking my turns at random. This was a maze someone had crudely built. We were all stuck in it. I screamed in shock as I turned a corner, bumping into someone who fell on their butt from the impact. Damn you, Kaylee said from her now sitting position. Come on, get up. We need to find the others, I said, offering my hand. I helped her up and we began walking. A short time later, that same familiar sight greeted us down from one particular passageway. An electric box with a red light on it was next to a door. A note hung from the box. Kaylee let out a sigh and ripped the note from the box. The hungry mouth hides. Circles have this many sides. Choose wrong and it slides. That's like one of those stupid kitty jokes. Kelsey yelped, frustrated. Yeah, but... Do you know the answer, I asked? No, but it told us to choose. How do we... She paused, looking above the door. Five chains hung above the door. All five chains had a hook attached to the bottom. A closer inspection showed each hook had a number on it. Zero, one, two, three, and four. 
were painted on each hook with that same red and green paint alternating with each number. Okay then, there's your answer, I said mockingly. Well, there's only one answer, right? I mean, a circle has no sides, she said with a bit of fright in her voice at the realization we had to choose soon. It definitely has no sides, but those riddles have tricked us before in the way it's worded. I replied, running my hand through my hair, pondering what to do. You're right. It definitely isn't zero. You know what? It's one, she said, pointing her finger up. How do you know that, I said, raising my eyebrow. It doesn't have any corners like a square, therefore, it only has one side, she said, once again confident in her statement. That actually makes sense, I said, attempting a smile. Kaylee grasped her hand around the hook labeled one. She gazed towards me and let in a heavy inhale as she pulled the chain. It was as if she disappeared right before my eyes as she dropped. Screams of pain were heard as I looked down. A trap door had slid open underneath her. She had dropped into a small pit and at the bottom was a steel grinder. I watched as the blunt metal teeth of the grinder slowly ate Kaylee as she was seemingly devoured by the giant machine. This maze claimed another victim. The door slowly slid shut. I placed my hand on my forehead as I thought of the answer. It was indeed a riddle I'd heard as a child. How many sides does a circle have? Two. The outside and the inside. I grabbed the chain labeled two. I pulled in. Another buzz was heard followed by a click. The door opened slightly. I pushed the door open and walked through. More of this metal and aluminum maze continued as I took turn after turn. More and more of those security cameras littered the walls, watching my every movement. A shadowy figure appeared at the end of the corridor. Hey! I yelled. The figure moved towards me. It was Taylor. I could tell he'd been crying as his cheeks were puffed up and eyes red. Are you alright, man? I asked. Yeah. I'm just scared, he said quietly. There can't be too many doors left. I just solved a riddle on one that led me here. Let's find another one, I said, not wanting to mention what had just happened to Kaylee. He nodded his head and we proceeded. After several minutes of walking through more and more corridors, taking more and more random turns, we found another large shutter door. This has to be it, dude, Taylor said with a whimper. A big shutter door led us in here. It has to lead us out, right? I guess, man, I don't know, I replied as I studied the door. Again, a note was stuck to a powered down box. Taylor walked towards it and excitedly grabbed the note. Two rooms left and right. The one with bees is quite right. Choose wrong. You're squeezed tight. We looked on either end of the room. Two smaller rooms were indeed left and right of us. We approached the one on the left and attempted to peer into the small window we were only able to see through standing on our toes. It was empty. Wait. I hear something. Taylor whispered as he pressed his ear against the door. He looked up at me with a look of confusion. I hear buzzing noises like flies or... He stopped momentarily to make eye contact with me. Bees. He continued with a frown. But the note said the one with bees is quite right. That has to be it, I said, yet again attempting to keep command. No, man. It says if you choose wrong, you will be squeezed tight. I'm allergic to bee stings. I once got stung and my face puffed up to where I couldn't see. That must be what it meant, right? He answered, picking up speed as the sentence moved on. I lifted my hands up on either side in confusion. We looked towards the other room and tried to peer into a similar small window. Since I was the taller of the two, I gazed in. Another empty room except the wall was littered with red and green paint, all letter B's. I smiled and looked down at Taylor. 
The letter B. The walls are covered with it, I said, shaking my head. <sighs> Seriously? He said as he looked up at the security camera watching us solve another riddle. The room had a sliding door. Tyler opened it and walked in. I blinked in a startle as the door slammed shut as soon as he entered. I tried to open the door again, yelling Tyler's name. I could hear him inside, but couldn't tell what he was yelling. I once again ran back to the window to peek in. Tyler was panicking as we both seemed to hear more mechanical noises start up. Tyler's panic turned to utter shock as we both witnessed the metal walls closing in on him. This was a compressor and it was activated. I watched as a third victim succumbed to this cursed maze. Taylor was crushed in the compressor. I walked towards the other small room. I opened the sliding door to hear the sound of louder buzzing. No bees. I looked towards the ceiling. Another security camera with a speaker. There were four speakers on each side of the room, making the buzzing sounds. Almost as soon as I entered, the buzzing stopped. The sliding door closed behind me as I heard mechanical noises start up yet again. I quickly ran to the door. It opened. I darted out of the room to see the shutter door was slowly opening. I ducked underneath and was met by another shutter door. Not all was as it seemed, though. While I looked at the other door, to my left was a chain link fence with a gate door. I was free of this maze. The night sky was a warming sight as I gazed at the stars. More mechanical noises were heard. I looked down as I realized. The second shutter door was opening. Did more people make it? As the door slowly opened, I saw feet. I recognized those shoes immediately. They were Jen's shoes. I smiled in delight as she walked from the building. It was then that I looked down to see Jen, dragging the bloody body of Evan. A serrated knife was clutched in her other hand. She smiled at me menacingly. He solved the last puzzle. I kind of just reacted. I couldn't let him get away, she said coldly. I stared into her cold eyes. She was delighted in her actions. She continued. I got five of them. That older lady almost caught me and asked if I was trying to get her killed by answering wrong. I mean, I was, but she fell back in line after a few quick misdirections. I was more clever, she said with a huge grin. My thoughts went back to that first poem where the stalkers said they were more clever. They were indeed. Damn you! Damn you! I yelled in frustration. I only got three. One was stabbed in the gut, one fed to the grinder, and one smashed in the compressor. I looked up at the camera pointing at us with that red light. Five to three. I'll beat her next time. I said to the camera with a grin.